Happy birthday, you, dear girls. Eric. Thank you, Happy girls. birthday to you. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Eric. Have yeah. a great day. There you go. We have. I didn't know we had an, uh, an AZ know. TV choir, but apparently we do. <laughs> they sounded pretty they good. They sounded good in, 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 in key, I guess. Yes, they were in key. Uh, with us today, we're going to talk about something you knew would eventually happen. Online doctoring. That's what I call it. Dr. Rogo is probably going to convince me this is a good thing. I'm going into this interview thinking I don't know about this. I don't know how you can take my temperature, my blood pressure, or anything like that online. Dr. Roga, welcome. Uh, Stat Health Services Incorporated, and you are a stat doctor, an ER doctor, correct? Correct. Okay, so it has come to us now. It has finally arrived, doctoring on the internet. How does this work, doctor? Well, very simply, there are um, a group of diseases that are very simple, minor, and very common that by their very nature, you end up uh, going to ERs and urgent cares quite frequently. And as a practicing ER doctor, uh, we've seen this for you years. You see them come mm -hmm. and you see them go. What's waiting. that group of illnesses? Very simple ones. Sinus infections, pink eye, urine infections, vomiting, diarrhea, rashes, medication refills, as well as people when they're traveling on vacation. In Arizona, we have a lot of tourism here. And they're away from their primary doctor and they don't have access. So we provide basically an internet-based house call. So the emergency room, which is very hard to get into, in most emergency rooms you're there three, four, five hours it's difficult sometimes. difficult to get out because you're there so long. Ex <laughs> exactly. So is this one of the reasons why uh, this application is so very effective for those minor, uh, minor diseases or minor il illnesses? I exactly. Um, and it's really coming from the industry. You know, we've seen this for years. I, I've been a chairman of a large department of emergency medicine and president of a large ER group. And we've all seen uh, the increasing use of ERs and urgent cares. And it's sort of the mm -hmm, care mm -hmm. continuum that's evolving. But doctor, every time I've gone into the emergency room, no matter what the il illness, mm -hmm. uh, illness is or the concern, I walk into the emergency room, no matter why I'm there, they take my vitals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you are correct. Okay. Uh, yes, we okay. do. Okay, my next question has to be, how do you take my vitals on the internet? Well, we actually don't take your vitals on the internet, but if you think about it, um, a lot of these diseases are very, very simple. We're not treating anything complicated. Okay, good. ERs are for heart attacks, strokes, abdominal right. pain illnesses, you know, urgent care centers are for lacerations and broken bones and simple things. So this is things. going to free up the flow for us. Correct. It's the next stage of the continuum. You know, if you, if you see sort of how healthcare has evolved, uh, prior to the 1950s, doctors did house calls. Mm -hmm. That was commonplace. And then the primary care doctors couldn't do it anymore. Right. Uh, they got too busy. So the care shifted to hospital systems. And then you saw urgent care centers evolve to fit the need for really a deficit of providers. I do see the uh, loosening up the congestion, certainly mm -hmm. in, the, in the room. Now, who can use this service, doctor? Well, we're primarily a uh, benefit for employers because they are seeing uh, their health care costs continue to increase. Mm -hmm. And they have a problem. Employees continually use these expensive settings. So we target uh, providing a very affordable, convenient, and high quality visit. And actually, in many ways, higher quality than what you get now, believe it or not. So I'm going to make you a believer by the time we're done. Uh, but he you knows have a we started off with me going, uh-oh. But there are a lot of legitimate questions with that, to, to Tanya's point. And so what, who are, right now, how many people are using this service in Arizona? Can you give us a, an example of who's using this right now? Sure. So we've rolled out with multiple employers throughout the state. And our largest being Scottsdale Healthcare, who has mm -hmm. entrusted us with yeah. their employees. So if you think about it, you have a, uh, an incredibly well-known system that recognizes the need to, as a cost savings measure, figure out how do we decrease our cost of employment. You know, the increase interesting part of this that I love is that we have gone full circle uh, somewhat. This is the 21st century's mm -hmm. version of a house call. That's exactly it. And it's a live encounter. So we're going back, this is going back to a house call, and it's actually going back to talking to people. But I, I must say, doctor, how long do I wait in the waiting room? Uh, because again, even though I can reach you this way, is there a long wait? Uh, I, try to, I try to connect with you and I can't connect? He's saying those right. are the call stack up. Yeah. Right. Our average response time has been under 10 minutes right now. Okay. Oh, that's great. So if you think about it, by the time you get in your car and drive somewhere, you're already seeing the doctor from the convenience of your home while you're at work, while you're traveling, and you're getting a 
emergency room physician, so the same provider that you would drive to see, and actually an exceptionally high quality provider, while we're also leveraging a lot of the value of what the internet has, so the ability to reduce handwriting errors and watch drug-drug interactions and have medical Does records. Does President acceptable. Obama know about this? Can well, we plug this into our health care system? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great segue to what he's talked about in the State of the Union. Exactly. Exactly, because we, while not directly endorsing our company, he certainly uh, gave us a good stamp of approval by basically stating that he's looking at making major investments into internet and technology and one of the reasons was to provide face-to-face -face virtual encounters where patients and doctors will interact. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, antibiotics, can you prescribe over the internet to me? Yes. Uh, and the majority of diseases that we target are either infectious or inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the prescriptions result in an antibiotic or an anti-inflammatory medicine. Uh, we do not prescribe any DEA substances, so this is not a way to get Vicodin or Valium or, or, or narcotic pain medicines. So this is for simple conditions. Walk us through something like this. Walk us through. Uh, what do I do? I give you my symptoms. Uh, how does the system work? Would, would you like me to show you yes. while we're doing it? Okay. Yes, please. So here's an example of a visit. And essentially, you will have logged in from your uh, unique username and password. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we've designed it to be very uh, uh, cognizant okay. of patient confidentiality and safety okay. while very user friendly. Mm -hmm. We've had users up to 75 years old that have done this seamlessly. Mm -hmm. It's very, very so simple. So it's easy. It's a very simple process. I'm not a major technology person by any means, and anyone who knows me knows that uh, if I'll use this, then it's got to be easy to use. Okay. Um, my nine-year-old daughter has done this, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, I'm certain. I'm, I'm sure your oh, yeah. three-year-old daughter can do it better than we can do it. So we make it very simple, and the patient provides simple information. At this point, the patient's already provided simple information, so they've logged in. They've provided who they are, where they live, who's their primary care doctor. And you're responding? Uh, the, the next step is they will provide their medical information, so we'll have your allergies, medications, past medical history, and then we're responding, and it's a live encounter. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the availability of leveraging a lot of the technologies out there, we're able to scale and provide exactly what you touched on, which is how fast will it take me? Well, we can have multiple providers everywhere, and we do, mm -hmm. ready to take the calls and have a live encounter. Now, do you, you keep a database. Can I reach you again at another time? Absolutely. 24-7, 365, so we provide availability at any time, anywhere that you are in the country. But if I like you, can I, can I contact you directly and have you online, or is it going to be a different physician each time? Much like the way that you practice you in an, an emergency, emergency room, room, you get a different a physician, uh, whoever's okay. on call. And do but you? I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Uh, in the next 10 years, all hospitals will be mandated to have medical records online. That is correct. So they are there. Everyone is driving towards electronic. This is records. just another step to that, isn't it? So, yep. so in this process, then you would be able to connect to those medical records. Yes, integration-wise. And if you think about it, I mean, what happens now? So you have a very simple illness, um, but you try to get in to see your doctor, and most of the time, unfortunately, primary care doctor is unavailable. They're very busy, mm -hmm. and we refer everyone back to their primary care doctor. We want to complement their practice, but you end up going to an ER in urgent care or often waiting two or three days for treatment, mm -hmm. missing a half day of work, waiting in line for the pharmacy for the prescription, and a lot of wasted effort for something that was fairly simple, whereas we can treat you in under 10 minutes. What's now. the cost? So the pricing structure is based on an access fee that an employer pays, uh, and then it's a per visit fee. And it's dependent on what the employer wants to accomplish. We have some employers who are really driving utilization there by making a very affordable product for their employees, and others that have shared in the cost savings with their employees. No matter what level, it is significantly less than an urgent care or an ER visit, M markedly so. Uh, rest my fears here that if I go to you or this system, and I think I have a sinus infection. Let's just pull that out of the hat. Mm -hmm. I have a sinus infection. I describe to you, you sense that I have more than a sinus infection. Then you refer, you recommend that the person then come in or go to their doctor. How do you diagnose that? Well, exactly along those lines. You know, they, they teach you the first day of medical school that 75% of everything you need to know is in the history. 
See, I, I'm just back in this. Okay, I, I'm back in this. I want to see you face to face. I, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm just back in that mode. Well, we're going to do it just like this. Okay. So if you came to my office or to the emergency room okay. and you had a sinus congestion or sinus infection or something simple, I would review your medical records. Right. And we've modeled an exact patient visit there. So we would be interacting just like this. Hey, Tanya, it's Dr. Roga. Tell me what's going on. I see your medical records. I see your allergies. How are you feeling today? Have you had a sinus infection before? Do you have any surgeries? It's going back to really talking to patients instead of rushing to examine no, them, x-ray them, get them out the door. Yeah. So on the other end, they need to be set up just like you are in order to converse with you. It is incredibly simple. Um, if the patient has a webcam, mm -hmm. then the doctor and patient see each other. Mm -hmm. If the patient mm -hmm. doesn't have a webcam, you still see the doctor because we always wanted you to know that you were getting. But the doctor can't see you. Not in that situation. However, um, you can upload a picture from your cell phone. Uh, you can um, uh, do it on phone if you prefer. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you do have a webcam, then you interact live together. I would say uh, on average, and now, by the way, every new computer now is made with a webcam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, pretty much most of the smartphones have them right mm -hmm. now. But doctor, d back to Tanya's point again, I mean, most time when you go into the physician, they're, they're going to take your blood pressure, they're going to look at you. Sure. They're going to examine you I'm physically. I'm still going to miss that, I think. I mean, d but doesn't that make a difference when you're trying to diagnose something you, that I'm face to face, you see me, maybe I'm kind of flush, or maybe I'm white, I mean, uh, you know, and, and blood is drawn out. Doesn't that make a difference if you can't see me? Uh, to your diagnosis or not? It all goes back to the right providers, making sure you have the right doctors in your network, okay. and taking the appropriate history and focusing on the right diseases. So, of course, anybody who says, I have abdominal pain, uh, that's not for the service. This uh, is going to yeah. be referred to your doctor. Yeah, the, this I. Is the be point I was to the making is. Yes. This is going to be referred to an urgent care center, but you'll have someone uh, appropriately screening the patient and putting them to the right place. So yes. essentially this is very limited in its application. Simple, simple diseases. So if you think about it right now, you know, let, let's say that you uh, were sick out of town today mm -hmm. and you called your doctor. They wouldn't be taking your blood pressure or your pulse. Uh, they would be doing the same sort of thing. But unfortunately your doctor is not available most of the time. Mm -hmm. And this is providing actually even the next level of a visit, which is to say, okay, let's do a face-to-face. -face. Let's electronically prescribed medications. Let's give you patient education materials that actually will inform you about your disease, about your medications. But to your point, it's exactly right. You have to be narrow on your scope right. and be very simple on what you're doing. You've convinced Here me to about 75% <laughs> doctor, almost. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so it's much. Being utilized. You're, uh, it's being utilized quite a bit already? Yes, we're live, and the testimonials and the comments from our patients have been phenomenal. Excellent. Excellent. Doctor, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, we're talking to U.S. Congressman Paul Gosar when we come back. But first, we're going to encourage you to stay tuned for the KFNN Money Minute. We have the Sedona Marathon, Parks and Rec, and uh, don't fumble with the menu for Super Bowl when we come back.